I came to England in the mid-60s as a young architect, and I went to work for Colin St. John Wilson. Most of his friends at the time were painters uh, of Kitai's generation, so he knew him a little, but I first got to know him when he came to Cambridge to the Art Society and gave an evening lecture. Um, and it was the most, he, he'd written every word and he stood hunched over his text reading. Um, and it was the most intense talk I've ever been to. It was the kind of talk, it was fascinating, but if you thought about one sentence, you missed the next one and got lost. So I had to read it later on. Uh, but he was like that. He never did anything if he didn't do it thoroughly and very... Um, intensely. He and my husband were both great bibliophiles and spent weekends finding obscure secondhand bookshops and buying books for themselves and each other. They, they went through a phase of saying, look what I found for you on Saturday. It was a kind of family friendship. I mean, he, he actually has a great sense, had a great sense of humor and uh, would be very funny. But he when he was concentrating on something, he concentrated like nobody I've ever known, really. He found a big terrace house in Chelsea, and he bought that, and he said, well, would we, would we do it up for him? And by then, uh, I, I said to Sandy, well, actually, I would like to do it. And I was very conscious that it was not a place to be clever, because he was going to be working there every day and his environment is a visual environment and his eyes are what he, what he works with. And so the way we worked is I would do a whole scheme for him and if he didn't like something about it, he never would say, well, I like it, but can we just change that? He'd say, well, this is what I don't like about it and then I'd go away and do another scheme. And gradually it became clear to me that he, he was troubled by uh, geometry that didn't quite make it, um, so it was quite tricky. And the the way we ended up organizing it was really trying to make other bits of geometry that we inserted very clean cut. Because books were such an important important part of the studio, we turned the the enclosure of the stair going down to the family area into a step bookcase, which was really the only object inserted in this otherwise cleared out and simple long room that went from front to back. When we finished the studio, he suggested that he'd like to do a portrait of the family. I found sitting for him actually much more disconcerting than being his architect. And you just feel as though you've done something wrong somehow, you know, that it's your, f and especially if it isn't going well, which he makes very clear, you know, oh, it's just, that's terrible. And I just always felt as though somehow it was my fault when it wasn't going well, that my nose was on wrong or, you know, somehow I ought to be able to be a better sitter or something. I didn't really feel frightened of him, but I didn't feel comfortable through any of that. Before and after, it was delightful because he always wanted to sit and talk. But while he was actually working, I found it quite intimidating in a way. It was just at a point when he was changing the way he was painting to some extent. I think that disappointed my husband a bit because he loved the the previous kit eyes of which we had one or two. A very kind of smoky paint went on quite dry and incredible sort of smoky colors and suddenly that he was putting thick paint on and he was very interested in the Yale Art Gallery uh, where his favorite painting was the Van Gogh night cafe, whose composition is not unlike the portrait that he did of us. Um, and the colors aren't that unlike either, a sort of liverish red and a kind of rather bilious green in that crept into the portrait of us. And also thick paint. And I think it was a change from what he'd been doing to something else. And at the end, he said, rather unsure. I think, well, it's a transition work. 